Welcome back to Houston Life. February is heart month, and while you should always be staying on top of your health, this month serves as a reminder to make those appointments and see a doctor. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. Joining me now is Dr. Ankit Mera, an interventional cardiologist with Memorial Hermann, for a look at how they are treating heart and vascular disease. Dr. Mera, it's nice to see you. Thanks for having me, Derek. Thank and, you. Well, this is fascinating that when people think about treating the heart, they think of open heart surgery. We're going to get into the specifics of the cutting ed edge technology you're using now, but explain to us interventional cardiology. What exactly is that? So intervention cardiology is basically a subspecialty of cardiology where cardiologists undergo extra training for a year or two to perform procedures to treat heart diseases. Okay, got it. Most of these can be life-saving in an acute setting, and sometimes these procedures can help manage symptoms along with medications when medications by themselves are not enough to provide good quality of life and achieve the same symptomatic benefit. Okay, let's have uh, just sort of a throwback lesson. It's been a while since I've been in school. You've brought this heart model. Give to us the basics of how the, the heart actually works, Dr. Mara. Great question, Derek, great question. So this is the heart model. The heart is not that big. We like people with big hearts, not this big. It's slightly smaller than this. Okay. And if I open the heart, there are four different chambers of the heart. As you say, the right top, the right bottom, the left top, and the left bottom chambers. Mm -hmm. The blue blood, our body has a network of these tubes that carry blood all throughout the body. And the heart is the main core that pumps this blood to help circulation. The blue blood that is less in oxygen comes to the right top chamber of the heart, goes to the right bottom. From here, it's pushed to the lungs. We breathe in air. The oxygen mixes with the passing blood. Blood becomes oxygen rich, comes to the left side of the heart left lower chamber, and from here, it's pushed to the rest of the body. The flow within the heart is guided by these valves. Any disturbance in the flow can re lead to heart diseases. Okay, and that disturbance could be caused by a lack of exercise, the foods that we eat. You have brought uh, also, as part of your demo here, some, some arteries. Tell us what we're seeing with these arteries here. One right. seems very clear, another seems very, very blocked. Yes, so when I'm gonna show these models, what I'm talking about are the coronary arteries. These are the arteries that run on the surface of the heart. The okay. main function of the heart is to push blood or oxygen to the rest of the body. But the heart needs its own oxygen or blood supply. So the, on the surface of the heart, there are arteries that are giving oxygen to the heart muscle. So these are close-ups right here of these arteries of these that arteries. are actually on the surface of the heart. Correct. Okay, let's get into treatment because as we mentioned, a lot of people think of open heart surgery. Uh, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about minimally, minimally invasive surgery. Right, most of these procedures fall under the umbrella of minimally invasive surgeries. And, and it, it's fascinating how we have changed things. How by making a small incision of around one to two millimeters or maybe six millimeters in your wrist or the groin, we can reach all the way to the heart without cracking the chest open and take care of the valve issue or any heart blockage that we might be dealing with. So you can make an incision, just so I'm understanding this, in someone's wrist or in their groin area and pass a catheter up through their arteries to reach the heart. Correct, and take care of either a valve issue or any heart blockages. That is incredible. Right. You brought today, we're seeing some video uh, right now of the Memorial Hermann Heart and Vascular um, Center there. And you also brought with you one of the catheters so our viewers can see exactly right. what would be slipped into the body. So this is a balloon actually, which comes loaded with the help of with a stent. On top of this, you can see a mesh-like tube. This is the stent. That sta the other end of it stays outside the body. Okay. This goes within the clogged artery the stent goes up from outside and then stays there, take, squishing the blockage on the side of the walls and clearing the passage. So this that. is a blocked artery, and this is how your artery needs to be. Beg your pardon, this is how your artery needs to be. Clean. So you want it to be nice and open. And I know this stent is very, very small. I, I hope our viewers can see this at home. Who would be eligible for a procedure like this, Dr. Mara? Any, I think eligibility is, 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 is a vast, vast variety of people can be, can be eligible for these procedures depending on the clinical condition. And these minimally invasive procedures, I must say, have been a boon to people who were considered high risk for open heart surgeries. This has given hope to them. Less downtime, most of these procedures can be performed under moderate sedation. No need for general anesthesia at times. 
discharge from the hospital in a day or two can be achieved. That is incredible, yeah. in the hospital for a day or two. And of course, we want to prevent uh, any sort of heart issue for, from happening. You're seeing some tips there on your screen right there to prevent any problems. Dr. Ankit Mera, thank you so much for stopping by Houston Life. And in the meantime, to our viewers, if you'd like to learn more about heart services provided by Memorial Hermann, you can visit their website, memorialherman.org slash heart. Thanks. Thank again. you. Thank you for having me.